Okay, so there's this famous kind of effect with still pictures. It's called a Ken Burns effect, based on Ken Burns, the famous documentarian, who uh, would take still images and make them kind of dynamic to make it look more like a movie, even though it was a still image. And you've seen this in a billion, zillion um, documentaries and other venues. Uh, too. But anyway, I, I give you an idea. Here's how it looks. I've been working more on this movie I was showing you guys. And um, this is a little fast. I really, if I was going to spend more time on it, would probably make the shrinking and expanding not go quite so fast. And but that way I could do that is by stretching out the size of the photos. Um, so anyway, uh, but here's, a, here's an example. <laughs> Okay, well you get the idea. So move around. But see, these are moving pretty darn fast, and I probably could use half as many pictures and over the exact same time, and it would look a little more aesthetic. But anyway, you get the idea, and I'm sure you know what I mean. You see, you see how in, in some cases I make them. So, for example, here it starts out uh, very big, and it gets little. Here it starts really big and it even rotates, gets littler. Here it starts little, gets big. Here it starts big and it pans across the faces and gets smaller. So um, these are just regular old pictures that I made them dynamic. And unfortunately, uh, it's not that easy. It's pretty, it's kind of tricky and a little monotonous. But it's cool. The effect is cool. So what I did was I left this very last one. So um, I decided that on this last one, I did it on purpose. I left this as the last one. And the idea is I thought it would be a cool picture where we'd start just like that. And then it would zoom in on Maureen's face. And that would be the last slide. So go to the first here so here's the trick um, so we gotta first of all go for the go to the very beginning of the video uh, I'm sorry of that one picture so I'm on the timeline you can see and I'm and I can actually use the little arrow keys on the keyboard to get exactly to where I want to get so this is a very beginning of this picture so now what I do with this picture is I click on it and of course if I double click it'll bring it up here in the source um, file where, where we can edit it but here's where we use this this tricky effect controls button now if you don't have this slide selected it'll get very frustrating for you because you gotta make sure you have the right thing selected that you're going to be messing with and in fact if you don't have anything selected all these things up in the uh, effect controls panel won't show up but I'm at the very beginning and you can see also this little slider on the effects control actually moves the slider on the timeline too all right, so we're at the beginning of that picture, and um, I'm going to, the first thing I have to do is add a keyframe, even though the picture is going to start this way. So I fixed the picture the way I want it to start. And some of them, you know, were big, and some were small, and some were rotated, etc. But this one, I'm going to have it start exactly as it is. But still, I have to make what's called a keyframe, and the keyframe is like a fundamental thing in animation and in... Um, uh, movement and videos etc and what it means is basically it tells the program okay I'm gonna st something's gonna happen and so start making it happen now that's what a keyframe means and then another keyframe when you put another keyframe it says stop now so you have two different states and what the keyframe does is it makes the animation go change from one state to the next gradually and I'll show you what I mean. So we're at the beginning, right? And 
you uh, if you get to the effects controls if you've got the right thing selected which is that graphic it will show you motion opacity time remapping any of these I could animate by the way so I could make her get more and more uh, opaque or more and more invisible much more and more transparent over time if I wanted but I'm not gonna I can make her rotate over time and you saw one of the pictures but what I'm gonna do is do position and scale and they're already clicked because I messed with it before and so um, I'm gonna unclick them and click them again but what I did was I clicked these little um, hourglasses also uh, pick these little hourglasses and then I go um, and you look over here which represents the timeline it made these two little diamond like things and it means all right we know something's gonna start now all right so now I go to the very end of the clip I can move this timeline up here I can move it on the on the actual sequence and I move it to the end like this okay so I'm at the very end right there of the clip so now I want to do my moving and there's you can actually go up here in the position and scale thing uh, I can move a slider and in the position thing I can change these numbers up here 800 and 600 and it'll change the position but the much easier way to do it is to go down into the actual the window that shows the video and move get it little and I'm gonna go all the way down to 10 percent here and then a very important thing is I go back up to my effect controls window and right next to the motion there's a tiny little arrow diamond I have to click and when I do that it puts these wireframe things on the video and so what I want to do is I'm going to make the video the way I want it to be at the end so the first keyframe I put in there and it said something's going to happen and then this keyframe tells it this is when it's going to end. So I want you to make up what should go in between. So here's more. Well, let's put her with the two little children. <laughs> Even though they have kind of grumpy faces. I think they're trying to look official. But anyway, so that's the way it would um, end. And you can tell that you've worked the keyframe thing because it has this little line in there that shows that it's moving around, etc. So, so what I want to do now, let's see what it is I, I ended up with. So I'm going to go down to the timeline. Also, I'm going to change the back to fit and let's see I'll go back a couple of pictures before. <laughs> So there you go. It worked pretty well. Anyway, so that's the the idea of how you actually do this Ken Burns effect to make things move around. And by the way, I experimented with uh, putting transitions, and it works kind of sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't. And the reason is because when you use a transition, it actually takes a little part of each of those pictures and kind of blends them together and when one's moving one direction and one the other it makes the transition look a little funky so you can play with putting little transitions in there uh, but uh, and see how it works for you but in any case that's how you make the Ken Burns effect with still photos in uh, Premiere Pro